Shalom, peace, blessings, and love to you and your families. And may Yahweh bless the sincere as always. So in this video, we're going to talk about the trumpets being blown on Zion. We're going to talk about a little bit of some conspiracy theories that you people may call conspiracy theories. And the reason why I say they're called conspiracy theories is because what we believe and, you know, what we've been shown through the Spirit of the Most High Yahweh, some people may call it foreign some people may consider it to be contradicting to what they believe in all right some people may consider it to be a conspiracy so we're going to talk about the trumpets being blown because the most high god says that in these times and in these days the trumpets were going to be blown on his holy hill and people were going to tremble joel chapter 2 verse 1 blow the trumpet in zion sound the alarm on my holy hill let all who live in the land tremble for the day of Yahweh's coming it is close at hand a day of darkness and gloom a day of clouds and blackness like dawn spreading across the mountains a large and mighty army comes such as never was in ancient times nor ever will be in ages to come which, you know, this is a precept to uh, Jeremiah, the 30th chapter. And the Most High God says, He hears cries of fear and terror, not joy. You understand? So this is how people are living nowadays. And it's our job to warn them. Like it says in Ezekiel 3, 17. Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Yasharal. So hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. Because again, the Most High Yahweh only gave us his words. All right? That's what he did for Jacob. He revealed his words to Yasharal and all the nation. So this is why we are to give the people warning from Yahweh, our God, who gives us the understanding and the discernment. All right? This is never of our own strength. Yahweh does this for us. Ezekiel 33 and 6 Look what it says here But if the watchman sees the sword coming And does not blow the trumpet to warn the people And the sword comes and takes someone's life That person's life will be taken Because of their sin But I will hold the watchman accountable for their blood You see that? So we don't want no blood in our hands Okay The Most High God says that it is our job as his chosen people to warn all people all right about the sword which we're going to talk about the sword because the most high god told you how esau was given the blessing of the sword isaiah 62 and 6 says i have posted watchmen on your walls yarawashalom they would never be silent day or night see that day and night the most high god says that he will stand by our side as is you who call on Yahweh, give yourselves no rest. Because the Most High God says that this was going to happen. He said that he has made a people for himself to proclaim his praises, to proclaim his, you know, wonderful deeds that he has done, and to proclaim his name among all people. Isaiah 32 and 1. See, a king will reign. Who is that king? That's Yahweh. Yahweh is our king. Did we forget about that? Yahweh is our judge. Yahweh is our lawgiver. It is, it is he who will redeem us. All right. So that's why it says, See, a king will reign in righteousness, and rulers will rule with justice. Which, again, this is another precept to Obadiah 1 and 21, where it tells us how deliverers will ascend to Mount Zion and govern the mountains of Esau. Okay, so again, you know, a lot of people hate it. Hey, that is your problem. All right, but this is the most high Yahweh's wonderful deeds that he has that he has done for his people, that he is doing for all peoples. Isaiah 32 and 2. Each one will be like a shelter from the wind and a refuge from the storm, like streams of water in the desert and the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. See that? A righteous king. Who's that? Yahweh, our God who has no image, who has no form, okay? That's why it says that the kingdom will be Yahweh's, right? 
the saints shall take the kingdom and you know shall possess it forever and ever and the kingdom will belong to Yahweh because he is our father it is it is it is Yahweh alone who has given us this water you understand this wisdom this knowledge the understanding check this out though verse 3 says then the eyes of those who see will no longer be closed which is happening now okay what's happening now some of you people fail to realize it. That's that's fine. Okay, that's okay. We're gonna talk, we're gonna get to you in a second. But again, for the sincere brothers and sisters that see this and you have experienced this, that's because Yahweh is real and He is with you. Okay. So it says, then the eyes of those who see will no longer be closed, and the ears of those who hear will listen. This is another precept to Daniel 12 and 1. Okay. This is why the Most High Yahweh says that he will return to Yahweh Shalom, which is a people before a place, with mercy. That's the reason why Isaiah 14 and 1 says that he will have compassion on Jacob. And again, choose Yasharel. Again, choose Yasharel to do what? To teach the word. Okay? To teach the word. To be his priest. His nation of priests. Okay? That's what they have been chosen to do. So again, if you people are unsatisfied with this, you understand, if you, you know, you, you, you waited for something else, you know, you thought you was going to get a million dollars for all the troubles you went through in your life, well, you know, hey, that's because you want the quail. You've been eating at the mountain shrines and you need to go on a diet. All right, you need to go on a diet. That's the reason why you have to, you know, take that spiritual fast. That's the reason why you got to take that spiritual rest, which is the new Sabbath. Okay. Because you've been eating at the mountain shrines and you do not understand the words of the Most High. You, you, you're loathing the choicest meals. So again, this is only for those who are, you know, sincere. Those who are actually going to be willing and obedient. Verse 4 says, The fearful heart will know and understand. Again, the Most High God says that He deals with those who tremble at His word. Okay, so you don't have to take my word for it. This is all found in the scriptures you know which whichever version you want to use the new international the king james the torah okay you can find these scriptures there that's why the most high god tells each and every one of you who reads his words proverbs 4 and 7 with what they getting get the proper understanding okay you can read from whatever version but if you don't got the proper understanding <laughs> it's worthless it's vain okay so again it says here, the fearful heart will know and understand, and the stammering tongue will be fluent and clear. In other words, they will understand the word of Yahweh, you know, precept upon precept. Not how these so-called elders of Yasharal try to t you teach us for all these years, not how these damn churches have been trying to teach us for all these years, right? But no, but for how Yahweh have been trying to teach us for all these years, precept upon precept, his words alone. Verse 5 says, No longer will the fool be called noble, nor the scoundrel be highly respected. Which through the spirit of Yahweh, I made a video about this last night. Okay? This is what's going on right now. A lot of these people who, you know, was faking the funk and they were just, you know, trying to teach the word of God just for women, just for likes, and just for attention. Well, now, in these times, they're going to go down to the ground. All right? Dust is going to be their food until they repent. Because they can repent and they can learn the ways of the Most High Yahweh. All right, but are they? Are they going to be willing to let go of all that pride? Do you understand that? Are they going to be willing to sacrifice their subscribers? Do you understand that? Because again, you got to let go of all of that. Okay, you got your followers, you got your, you know, your your subscribers. Well, then guess what? Make a video saying that you were wrong. Okay, let go of your pride and arrogancy, since you you know so worried about your followers and losing them. Tell them that you were wrong, and maybe people will start to like you. Okay. Because guess what? The Most High God says that He deals with those who are humble. And those who are humble are going to confess when they are wrong. That's why nobody knows it all. Because the Most High is teaching us day by day. Okay? So again, it says, No longer will the fool be called noble, nor the scoundrel be highly respected. Because that was, that was all that there were. A bunch of scoundrels, a bunch of, you know, jackals, right? A bunch of people that, you know, they, they were ruling. With, you know using their using their power unjustly so that's what you know that's what these people were doing and nowadays the most high god says that that power will be taken away from them okay and 
you know, again, like I always say, you don't have to like me. That's fine. You understand? I don't expect anybody to like me. I always said this from the beginning of when I started making videos. I'm not here for anybody to like. I am here to tell you what the Most High How expects you to do, okay? So, again, you, people may think that I'm Satan, I'm a demon, but guess what? I'm worse than Satan. See, Satan gave you a chance to worship him. I'm not giving you a chance to worship me. I'm telling you that you have no choice but to worship Yahweh. Okay, and again, it's never a threat. You understand that? It's a suggestion. It's a warning. Right? Because that's what the Most High God says. Give them warning from me. So Isaiah 48 and 6 says, You have heard these things. Look at them all. Will you not admit them? From now on, I will tell you of new things. Of hidden things unknown to you. So that's the reason why, you know, a lot of people are being thrown into utter darkness. Because they are not willing to admit Okay, that they were wrong. They're not willing to admit that Yahweh is God and Savior alone. Okay, they're not willing to admit. Verse 7 says, They are created now and not long ago. You have not heard these things. Okay, again, you have not heard of them before today. So you cannot say, Yes, I knew of them. So let's read Habakkuk chapter 1 and 5. Because again, you know, this, is, uh, this video is going to be referred to. Uh, blowing the trumpets on Zion. All right, sorry. So Habakkuk 1 and 5 says, Look at the nations and watch, and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe, even if you were told. Verse 6. I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impudent people, who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. Okay, so the Most High God says that he was going to do this. Whether you want to admit to it or not, well, that's on you. That's the reason why you have to trust in his words. Because if you don't trust, if you don't believe, you're not going to be able to see it. It don't matter how much you try to read the words. But if you don't believe, see, if you don't believe, you're not going to see it. Okay? So again, that's why you're your own worst enemy. All right? You don't have to like me. You can think that I'm your enemy. That's fine. Okay? I never did anything to you. All right, so again, you're your own worst enemy. Jeremiah 42 and 11. Look what it says here. It says, do not be afraid of the king of Babylon, right? Because the most high God, he told us how he was going to raise up the, the king of Babylon. And again, this is a warning against going to Egypt. The most high God, tell, he told you again, you understand to obey, to don't go to the left, don't go to the right, to walk in that straight path. So if you people out there want to continue to, uh, you know, Rebel against the Most High's words. He's going to deliver you into the hands of your enemies. But for those that know what is right, for those that have taken the words of Yahweh to heart, do not be afraid of the king of Babylon, whom you now fear. Do not be afraid of him, declares Yahweh. For I am with you, sorry, get this stuff out the way. For I am with you and will save you and deliver you from his hands. Okay, because the Most High God says how he gave Trump America. Everybody said he gave America to Trump. Ezekiel 29 and 20, as I bring out many times when we're talking about this guy Trump. That says, I have given him Egypt as a reward for his efforts because he and his army did it for me, declares the sovereign Yahweh. So, you know, when these scriptures come out, you know, probably Trump and Trump supporters, they probably hear about this and they're like, well, what is this guy talking about? He's a prophet? He's fired. Right? That's fine. But you have to understand this here, right? The same way Nebuchadnezzar, he was proud and haughty at first. And, you know, he had a field to burn in order for him to learn. That's exactly what's going to happen with you, Trump. All right? And that's not a threat. That's just letting you know that you're going to have to revere the Most High Yahweh. Right now, you know, you're new. You just came into office. You have to please your master and stuff. That's fine. But soon you're going to understand that Yahweh is God. So look what it says here. Micah chapter 4 verse 10. Reef in agony, daughter Zion, like a woman in labor. For now, you must leave the city to camp in the open field. See that? And where is the city? The city is Yarawashalam, right? I mean, that's why the Most High God says that uh, he's going to destroy your mother because they have become corrupted and defiled, right? So this is why, you know, you, you know the Most High Yahweh says that he has created Mount Zion for us, okay? So again, sorry about that. This city here is Yerushalayim, and Mount Zion is our is our refuge. So again, this is why the Most High Yahweh says that His justice will dwell in the 
in the desert, okay? And his righteousness in the fertile field. Because we will take root below and bear fruit above. Alright, so again, for now you must leave the city to camp in the open field. You will go to Babylon. There you will be redeemed. Okay, or rather say rescued. There, Yahweh will redeem you out of the hand of your enemies. You see that? Again, this is the restoration of Zion. The Most High is telling you that this is talking about now, man. You are not going to admit them? Okay? This is ha happening now. This is why you have to be real with yourself, man. Okay? You have to be real with yourself because this is happening now. Alright? So, you know, this is why we read in Isaiah 59 and 20. The Redeemer will come to Zion. Once more, the Redeemer is Yahweh. Right? I mean, his words, everything that he said he was going to do for his people. That's why we're supposed to worship Yahweh. We're not supposed to worship an angel. We're not supposed to worship a demon. We're not supposed to be worshiping men. Yahweh, who has no image, who has no form. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins. Alright, because that's the key point here. It says, those who repent of their sins, declares Yahweh. Like it says here, Micah chapter 4, verse 2. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of Yahweh from Yerushua. So you see why it says that the Redeemer will come to Zion? Because that was the word that the Most High Yahweh gave to his people, right? This is the reason why he says that I was the first to tell Zion, look, here they are. I give them a messenger of good news. Okay? Because if his words did not mention this, then it, this would not be happening. So this is why you're not supposed to be worshiping no one, no one except Yahweh alone. Okay? No one or nothing, rather say, except Yahweh alone. Okay, because he is the one who, who has spoke about this and, you know, it's coming to pass. And that's what makes him Yahweh. So, let's go ahead and continue to read Isaiah 1 and 18. Come now, let us settle the matter, says Yahweh. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Verse 19. If. You see that? Key point. It's a big if. Alright? If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good things of the land. Verse 20. But if you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. Again, the sword. The Most High Yahweh told you. He gave Esau the blessing of the sword. For the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. Like it says here, Isaiah 66 and 16. For with fire and with his sword, Yahweh will execute judgment on all people. And many will be those slain by Yahweh. Why? Because it tells us how the Most High Yahweh forms the light, how he creates the darkness. Right? Before we read that, let's go ahead and read Genesis 27 and 40 to show you that Esau was given the blessing of the sword. It says here, You will live by the sword, and you will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. Okay, which this happened already. I mean, that's the reason why people were in slavery. That's the reason why the Mosaic God said that he's going to redeem us from the hands of our oppressors. Because this is what happened to us already. You see that? So again, this was the key, the key point here. Was to show you that Esau was given the blessing of the sword. Alright, so this is why... Right, in these times and in these days, whether Esau likes it or not, right, he's gonna have to serve his brother. All right, Mr. Trump, you're gonna have to confess with your mouth that Yahweh is God. It's only best for you. I mean, you can read for yourself, Mr. Trump, what he did to Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, he changed his mind from that of a human to an animal. Okay, and then, and then Nebuchadnezzar got it right. So again, it's still early right now. And we're going to have to deal with Mr. Trump's BS, all right? He's going to be proud and arrogant for these first couple years. But who knows what might happen after that? I mean, let's go ahead and read this here. Isaiah 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, Yahweh, do all these things. So you see why it says, and many will be those slain by Yahweh. 